My friends, I want to tell you two things uh, from the perspective of a former Soviet citizen. I was born in the year 1980, and uh, we came to America when I was a little kid. So I wasn't alive for this, but, um, you know, my parents will tell you, and people, people who were alive at the time will tell you, uh, during the war of 1967, as you guys probably know, and if you don't know, now you know, that the Soviet Union was arming and funding all of the Arab countries who attacked Israel. They had been doing this uh, since, I think, the 50s, because they realized that Israel was not going to be their socialist outpost, and so... And, th and they also saw that, uh, you know, that they were in the Cold War. Not saw that they were in the Cold War. And they saw that America, so to speak, were the ones backing Israel. Kind of, sort of, not really. And so they needed a, uh, you know, to open up a front in the Middle East. So they used the Arabs to do that. One of the things that they were doing, that the, that the Soviet government was doing when 60, the 67 war started, and how did it start? Uh, a bunch of armies, Egypt, Lebanon, Syria, Jordan, and a bunch of others, Iraq, maybe Saudi, lined up tanks on Israel's border. And Israel, even though the leaders of Israel at the time were not religious people, if any, they were anything but religious, they followed the Torah and they rose up early in the morning and they preempted their enemies. Honestly, even if they hadn't done it, done it that way, even if they, God forbid, would have allowed one of those countries to attack them first, one of those armies, and they would have retaliated, just like we see today, uh, the Soviet Union would have called them the aggressor. This is what was written in every Soviet newspaper at the time. This was what, what was reported on Soviet television, Soviet news news channels. There's about three. Three channels total, not news channels. Total three channels. This is what was said at rallies by Soviet citizens at the time, that Israel is the aggressor, you know, out Israel co colonizer, out of Arab lands. My friends, 1967. Um... You know, of course, Jewish students were being uh, harassed in school. You know, students who had never even left the Soviet Union. They had nothing to do with Israel. They were just Jewish. They were being harassed in school. I ironically, this is what my parents tell me, the minute that Israel incinerated their enemies and took back Jerusalem and took back Judea and Samaria, say it with me now, Judea and Samaria, not the West Bank. What is it the West Bank of? The Jordan River. Uh, you know, all of these anti-Semites in school, this is what my parents tell me, started respecting Jews. They said, wow, you guys are not the, uh, part of my language, pussies we thought you were. You defended yourselves. Wow. My parents even have a friend who, who, who tells them, uh, a non-Jewish guy who tells, tells them, you know, guys, if you guys would have kicked all those people out in 1967 after taking back your land, we would have sent, we would not have said anything to you. So, my friends, what am I trying to say? All the stuff that you're hearing, I apologize for being long-winded, all of the stuff that you're hearing on college campuses today about Israel being the aggressor, Israel being the occupier, Israel being the colonizer, despite this time not even preempting, this time being actually mercilessly attacked, my friends, all of this ideology was installed. You know, like if college campuses in America are like computers, this these files were installed on college campuses starting from, I think, the 1970s. By who? By the KGB. They sent agents to this country. They uh, trained people who became college professors, or they trained people who already were college professors, sympathizers, with the communist cause. Guys, I don't have to tell you everything you see on campuses today. All the woke stuff? The woke stuff is already cultural stuff that ain't got nothing to do with the Soviet Union, right? 
even though probably Russia has been pushing this to collapse us from within, but that's a different story, right? As Putin, you know, you know, he goes against it and all that stuff. By the way, who do you think put that stuff in the college campuses? Or the methods? Guys, everything you see on college campuses today is from, is nothing new. It was fomented. It was, it was developed by Soviet agents. You guys ever see the Yuri Bezmenov? But I didn't even need to watch Yuri Bezmenov to tell you that this has been happening for, for a long time. What does he say? It's over-fulfilled, guys. It's over-fulfilled. It's to the point where it's now cultural Marxism, right? It's not even Marxism. It's just, I don't know what this is. Guys, all of these files were installed in the computers of college campuses all over America. And now the chickens have come home to roost, as Jeremiah Wright liked to say. All these kids you see, these white kids, people who look like me, right? Screaming, free Palestine, Israel's Yakapar. Guys, this is some old canard from the Soviet flipping Union. This is nothing new. But, but they've been running this for like 50 years, guys. And now the kids of this generation, 18 to 24, they did a survey. What? 52% of them uh, in America believe that what Hamas did is, uh, is a good thing. My friends, this all came from one place, the Soviet Union.